<laughs> Who, kid? Yeah. It's my twin. What's up, Mike? Yeah, is it? I told you, Mike. <laughs> I don't twin. know. You do not look like this. Hey, this is another episode of Hot Boxing. This is Mike Tyson. This is Ooh, good. And who we have here today, this is a pleasure. This is really an honor to be in your presence, brother. The one, the only, the Mr. Nick Cannon. Man, Wilding out come on. All day, every day. Wilding out right now. Yeah. No, that, first of all, and, there, and there's pictures out there to prove it. Um, I've, I've known this brother since I was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, but obviously I've been looking up to you all my life and man, when I say this, I mean this wholeheartedly. You are one of my favorite people to ever grace this planet. I mean, past, present and future, just based off of your spirit, the, the, I oh, mean, so much. Just highest class of civilization. Man. Thank you, brother. Man, I mean, like when I, when I get to see you, there, there's few people that just really just, uh, I stop everything I'm doing for for this brother right here next to me. So. I really appreciate that. That's love. So thank you. I mean, I, and then I'm a hot boxing fan. And then I kind of like who kid. He, he, oh, everybody he kinda like him. Everybody kind of like him. That's my brother for real, though. Like, but a lot like, of people don't know. Me and Nick used to hang like, tough. like nonstop. On some DJ stuff in the club, rocking, yeah, getting we, it going. We almost created a comic book. Yeah. That idea, but then yeah. you just got too big, man. Man, nah. That, like, I think it was the, the 50 Cent thing. He 50, 50 didn't want you hanging around me. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Wow. I mean, I don't know about that, but but the real reason Fifty I, jealous, Fifty jealous. Nah, I don't know about that. But, nah, we uh, love Fifth. Yeah, Shot the Fifth. I don't know about that, but the real reason that I didn't see him again because he married Mariah Carey. I never saw him again after that. Right? I mean, that was a, that, that. We hung out tough. Yeah, yeah. Before it was definitely pre Mariah. We yeah, we yeah. was young boys out here in the club getting it in. Uh, but yeah, man. I think you know as we grow older, we 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 never lose friendship. Yeah, they, it's but uh, we just always got to reconnect. But it's good to be here uh, with you brothers, man. Come on, tell us, man, what's going on with you, man? So much, man. We 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 get aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big man. drive. What's that? What's up? Oh, you know me, man. I got a thousand shows, but one. It's, it's a new show. It's a it's a car show. Mm. Uh, that you know I produce them through my company. That you know it got it got that same energy of cats that just you know our community. It's something about a black man in his car. That's a prized possession. You know, yeah. I mean, it's one of the first things that we buy. That's the first things we aspire to, but just then, like when it was the West Ham in the seventh the, the horse was the car. Yeah, the horse the, 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 the horse was your <laughs> that that was the your horse. sign of success. Yeah. but it was also your way to get around. Yeah. Yeah. So we doing that. It's really and it's a double entendre because it's like yo, we you know we ride big, we drive big, but that that energy, that that inspiration inside you to be like yo, what drives you? What's what's your big drive? So we got that. You know, more cars are a bad investment. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got we necessity. Episode. We got some. We, oh, we ain't done it yet. We got oh, something special outside, yeah. something oh. reminiscent outside for uh, for the king. So we gonna see what we we gonna ride around. Mike, yeah, I'm gonna buy my baller, <laughs> caller. He, because he he's one of the first to that that car culture man. Like yeah. we we saw Mike riding around and stuff Rolls. that we never. I didn't know imagined. what a Rolls Royce was until until Mike. Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really yeah. pay attention. Yeah, Puffy yeah. and them didn't either. He is, what the fuck is that? Yeah, you was the first man. You the first to do so much stuff. It's funny, man. As I was out here, there was this spot back in the day. I think it's 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 probably where One Oak is now. Before that was the Key Club. Before that was Billboard Live. Oh, I remember that too. And, oh my God, that's back in the yeah, day. Yeah, and I, that was probably the first place I met Mike. I was probably like fifteen out here in these streets doing comedy, doing music, and. First of all, just the name in itself. They, I got the opportunity to meet Mike, but I was like, I was nervous though too. Cause I'm like, that's really? Mike Tyson. I'm 15. Like all I know, this is the baddest man on the planet, the knockout king. I'm glad you're telling him that because he, he's very nice these days. But back no. then, but I mean, it's just it was his his reputation yeah. preceded him. You know what I mean? It was just like, and it was an honor. I was, but it was like, yo, that's that's a living warrior right there. That's a titan. And he was oh, the God. nicest, most beautiful dude ever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's the. And from that on, that point on, man, every time I would see him, he would embrace me, and just so much love, man. So I just, I, like I said, we we've been out here, and uh, I, I I only say this because we all 
at least for me, you know, being in the limelight, it's not easy. But when you can watch somebody just overcome obstacles, when you can watch people overcome adversity, uh, and then walk amongst us mere mortals as a king still, nah, he does it out. amazing. Like the wisdom that comes from this man, I'll be watching, I'm like, oh, that's such a gem. That's good. That's, yeah, nah, so it's just an, this is an illusion. This is not real. See, that's None the shit I be talking real. about. This that shit, illusion. cause I agree with you. None of this is but real. I, yeah, I my, agree my with you. My experience with him and mad people that come around him, everybody smiles. Everybody's happy. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen anybody. That's like, how it should be. Yeah. yeah. My little girl said, "If um, a couple of years ago, she said, um, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I said, making people happy. Mm. Yeah." You know, because that's just my goal of life. Why, you know, when we don't have much time as it is, why would we just be miserable? There it is. I mean, we're all unicorns, man. You being 13, 12, like, when did this start for you? Yeah, you like what 10? Yeah, what man, I started doing stand up probably when I was about 12, 11, 12. Really? I was doing music before that. I had my yeah. first demo when I was like eight. What? Yeah, like I was just all. Is it? Is this coming who up got in the that church? Demo? Who, who, who did you give it to? Shit, I don't know. That was a cassette. Was 80, like a I know, I was had, eighty-eight. You had the determination to be something in this game. Yeah, right? I knew. I used to tell. I used to tell people. I used to introduce myself as my full name since four years old. I'm Nick Cannon. Oh wow! And I was signing autographs and stuff like that. Like I just thought I was famous. <laughs> like oh, since, shit. since like four years old. That's but, like me when I when um. When I was a young kid, I used to, I used to knew something special was gonna happen to me. Mm. I used to knew I used to knew it was something. Like, I used to knew it, you know. That's Did you the, have that feeling too? Yeah, you, it's those you didn't spirits. know what it was, but you knew it. I mean, both of y'all had similar hungers where he uses the boxing. And yeah. he didn't give a fuck. He's gonna be the top of the game. You took every opportunity as if it was your last. Still do. Even to this even, day. even learning like how to drum, like playing the drums. Like I didn't even that, know you did shit like that. What yeah, the fuck like, is that about? I was like, you put it in front of me. I'm gonna conquer it. Like, it's not easy to be like you put it in I'll make it I'll make it make noise. You leave me in this studio, I know how every one of them buttons work. Like it's just I just all I'm I'm self taught and so like I come from a long line of hustlers and it's like the, the entertainment bug was inside of me so much, but it was more like, yo, I gotta make a way out and mm. we, if you put it in front of me, I'm gonna tell you I'm an expert at it before the night's over. Was was drum was that drumline movie your callus to like yeah, I would, remember that the drum line. <laughs> <laughs> Boop, <laughs> yeah, the oh, nah, drum line. When I saw Nick and that shit, I ain't gonna front, man. I felt like jitters. Like, nah, you put it down in that. Was that camera? It wasn't camera work, right? Nah, it, it I mean, well, it was it was two ways back then. It's over 20 years now, but it's like they did, uh, they ultimately wanted me to have a, a body double, a drum double, the whole That's film. what I'm saying. Like, but I, I instead, I, I befriended the dude that was my drum double. Shout out his name uh, is my man Snoop, and he he became like my roommate. And every case we we trained for two months straight, and I was like, I want to do all the drum, and I want you. I would rather oh, you wow. be my trainer than my double. And you know, if you there's probably like two scenes where he doubled it. it yeah, yeah, you could see. But other than that, I learned all of those cadences. Now, obviously, you know. They made me sound like I was a little more amazing than I was. Yeah, the sound yeah, design yeah, and stuff. But, my, but it's my snare was Chris. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, I just it was one of those things. I had to jump in there and we trained. I mean, frat life, college life, touring, doing all, in how Atlanta. Was how was that? I mean, I mean, it was only for a couple months, but it, yeah. so much so it made months. me. Yeah, it, it made me go back to. Uh, it made me go back to Howard University to get my degree. Like Wasn't that. Howard awesome? Man, come on. Holy man. It still is. And listen, right? Howard, Howard, Howard Homecoming. I used Homecoming, to know a guy right? that hustled back then, back in the 80s, right? Yeah. And he was just saying, Mike, have you ever been to D.C.? And I said, nah, man, I'm fucking the white guys. And he said, Mike, <laughs> and he said, Mike there's nothing but niggas down there. I said, what? what? Chocolate <laughs> City. I said, I didn't know. On television, you see nothing but the, 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 the fucking politicians. And you see nothing but whites. I said, nah, I don't fuck around down there. Chocolate said, nah, City. Mike. And once I went down there, I stayed. I married somebody that stayed down there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Go, go. <laughs> Mike, like me, he just pull up in the city and uh, marry, marry uh, somebody. You know, <laughs> yeah, we, we know about you, Nick. Yeah, you know? just pull up. Uh, I skipped the marriage part. Just yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, we know about you. Guys. <laughs> oh, it's a mess, Nick. It's a mess. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's cool because you're super successful, man. You, I mean, not, you can't use success as a reason to do that. But yeah, because that creates hey, another but you, argument. But, but you That's can. That's not true. What? what are you talking about? You he can have as many as he, yes, he can. What? He can have as many kids as he wants as long as he's taking broke care of them. Broke doing that shit? Yeah. That, they said as long as I'm broke. taking care of them. But see, yeah. then the debate becomes, 
what is taking care of them because then it's like, oh, just because you can Mental, provide for no, them financially not, doesn't mean. That's not what it's about, though. I, I Spending mean. Spending the time, the love, the care. Right. Let's go out, nigga. Let's go on a vacation together. Mm-hmm. Just us. Yeah. Okay. That's To me, I'm like, I feel like no matter how many children I have, they'll always have access to the highest quality of life. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the top schools, the top uh, what physicians the top whatever i can provide whether it's through my money or through when i what i call real wealth is my connections yeah, yeah. uh they're going to be able to be and aspire to whatever they want if they want to be a boxer my son moroccan could come hang out with mike tyson <laughs> you got to connect yeah <laughs> it, that's what i'm saying so it's like yeah. uh it's all about building your kingdom you know what I mean? And some, and, and some people are not going to understand it. You know what I mean? But as I, that's one of the reasons why I look up to Mike because he's been extraordinary all his life. There's nothing ordinary about this man. Yeah. And and we, we're not supposed to understand him. You know? And that's that's the vibe I'm on. Like, I, I can't really uh, worry about what people who don't, you know, live my lifestyle. That's how I can. think about life, too. I'd rather have two years of glory than a lifetime of nothing mm. of being average there it is. Yeah. and i say lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep i i mean I, I was part of the opportunity when i toured with like 50 or m or whoever yeah. like i always told myself i'm not like a normal guy in yeah. queens yeah I, i'm in saudi arabia i'm in you see Germany. in the world yeah so it's like and I'm not using sexual thing as a, a way to do it, but it's like I can, though. Right, not right. anybody could do that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's Why would I not do it and regret not doing it? Get as much out of life as you can. The deeper you dig, yeah. the deeper you become, brother. Yeah. This Ooh, the deeper you dig, the deeper you become. Yo, you got a lot of T-shirts to sell, man. Yo. I'm, a lot of yo, merch. I, yeah, you can, like, <laughs> Mike Crazy says something merch ideas prolific and powerful every <laughs> yeah, said merch. He said merch. Y'all putting that out, Mike. Yeah. Fucked up, man. That's the real thing. Listen, it's painful, though. Yeah. The deeper you dig, the deeper you become. Man, that's so so much life, so much wisdom. Mike, do you believe in, uh, like, where well, they talk about, like, the Akashic Records or even, you know, Li- lives after this life, like and listen, right? We forgot more than we than we know. Yeah, yeah, just no right. Illusions, you know. See, I'm gonna tell you, like we, when, we we know we've been somewhere before, but we just can't put yeah. our finger on it. Yep. You ever have an experience when you think about somebody that then he called or he has drive up next to you? Yep. Yeah. And we just forgot how to do it. Yeah. You it's telling you, it's that it's them spiritual connection. I'm telling you, absolutely. I, I learned all of that on shrooms. <laughs> That's what we are. I was telling my, I was explaining that to my 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 kid. My daughter, we're just fungus. Yeah. On the planet. When you think we're about a what a mushroom actually is, it is the the pure purest example of reincarnation. Oh man. Because it was like death. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then it turns into life, and a lot of it is life that is even more beneficial than what it was be- before that fungus died. <laughs> Oh my God, man! It's, it's getting deeper. And it's, deeper. I'm, I'm saying, man, like, yeah, yeah. I, like, with, like, the, why is the world like this? Why do we exist? What is our purpose? Yeah. Why would God? Why would Why would the universe even give us a chance to live and enjoy this? Yeah. Time and time again, yeah. that's what I believe it is. It's, it's a cycle. It's reciprocal, we, and that's like when you have yeah. a man that embodies the like this titan that he is. He's he, he's been ruled. He's been a ruler. He's been a ruler of kingdoms for 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 centuries. Man. But it's just like we got to see him in this form and see him right. He said this is my wife this is my wife talking right now. He brought up quantum birds, your wife, right? Brought up yeah. Yeah. do you do you believe yeah. in that? All of that. Like I'm I'm just telling you like what? when it, who are we to think that we're somebody? And then again, who are we to think that we're nobody? Nobody. There it is. As I said because energy Damn. never dies. And when you have the the ability, whether you want to look at it from a scientific perspective or a spiritual perspective, this is just a human shell and what we do it but the thing that makes us great is this whatever's inside us this energy that's constantly moving so there's no way you could tell me that once this 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 flesh this dirt goes back to dirt that this spirit that's been in me isn't going to live on forever that's gangster. and and when you could see something when, when you when you like you said whether it's stuff something that feels esoteric or 
or serendipitous or like there's a clairvoyant energy like that it's that way for a reason it's the law of synchronicity you know what i mean like it's you, when you know you're doing the right thing when you in that flow when you in that vibe when you in that zone yeah. whether it's in the ring whether it's in the booth like that's god operating that's that god energy that we get to tap tap into and you, do you know you believe in equal energy like like a quincy jones and will smith they they actually connected do you, do you believe in that kind of energy like well, i don't understand that yeah, yeah it's equal like energy. connected and then, and then it moved on to another like situation where they, you know will, i mean will is successful yeah but that's what i'm saying it's 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 i believe energy builds upon energy and and it's like a like-minded individuals who, That's the only people you could connect with. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, yo, that person understands me. That's why artists vibe with artists. Artists understand artists, but are an athletes rock with athletes. But I believe, like I said, if if I see somebody that can do for me and provide, like to me, I feel like I'm in that space in my career. I've done everything I could ever want to do, but now my mission, my calling, is to provide platforms and help other people with their dreams, and that's where. I can see, like, to me, my goal is to be the next Quincy Jones. You know what I mean? Like, my my goal is to be those the the next Harry Belafonte, those people that shifted and changed culture. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, to to create opportunities, whether it's through entertainment, through business, it's like I got to help the next generation. Who was your mentor? But there's people out there that think you're biggest. Those guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm just talking about the work no, that but, they put but no, in. No, no, but that's a trip, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, There's people that think you're as big as those guys yeah, still. I was, I, they put in so much work. I mean, Quincy. Yeah, but you look like a kid, man. I maybe know, maybe they look like a kid. This is this, fucked up. No, I'm not taking nothing <laughs> away from them. They're putting a lot of work, but your name is still up there with them. And you're oh, not man. even halfway there. Man, that means I, a lot. I think it's undeniable to... To not know who Nick Cannon is. It's well, listen, a whole different game. Whole yeah. different, um, transportation information is a totally different game. Yeah. That's, I mean, again, like I said, um, we, we sitting in the presence of a type. So just even the fact that I'll be able to tell my kids, I mean, I used to sit, sit up and chop it up with Mike Tyson. Mm. You know what I mean? And he, he would play game on <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, but we just passing through. Yeah. You know, we just passing through. I'm telling you, it's the, the it's the highest frequency. That's really what it's about. Like you say, equal energy. It's about people who operate on the highest frequency. And we walk in the room, like kings recognize kings. God yeah. recognize God energy. So it's like we don't even got to say nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just, I haven't seen you in. A, I mean, last time I saw you was in the airport. But yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. I feel like we, yeah, you just know what it is. It's yeah, like yeah. when it, I was like, oh, that's a good vibration right there. Yeah. Like we just we connect, we 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 flow, and then that's why sometimes we. We we use different spirits to tap into, whether it's the Kush, whether it's shrooms, whatever, to just put everybody on Open that it. frequency yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and see it, you know, with our third eye. Who was your mentor, man? Who, who, who? I got a lot of them. Like, I mean, I got a few. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have ones that you don't even know. You yeah. From a distance. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> but I came up young. Like I was, I was out here in Hollywood, moving around, trying to figure it all out. So, you know. uh, 15 years old, Jamie Foxx looked out for me. He used mm. to let me, like, I, because I was driving in my mom's car. He used to let me sleep on the couch. Just wow. His his little sister used to babysit me, had a no. crush on her. And all no, that. Really? Oh, yeah, because I was like the young comic. I was sleeping on the couch while, you know, they was partying and doing all of that. Oh, wow. Uh, and then from there, by the time I was 16, I got my first deal with, uh, with Will Smith. He introduced me to Quincy Jones. So, like, all of those cats was... You know, showing me the game and how this move, you know, in the 90s. You feel like you're lucky to get, like, tips because it's a dirty business. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always going to be a dirty business. Like, Hollywood, though. It's like yeah, another, it's a, it's it's a, a, a it's demonic a, business. Let's call it what it is. It's a dark business. <laughs> I, just think, I just think the devil gets a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a bad rap. It's like devil's advocate. <sighs> they blame him for everything, right? <laughs> In order for him to acknowledge you, God has to acknowledge you first. Facts, facts. You, know? you just got to know how to play. Like that's why I say I like to be, I like to be God energy in the midst of devils. Mm. You know what I mean? Cause that's it, crazy. You know? It, do, do do you play dumb like me? Like you know what this person's about, but you play the game. To you get never let them know how smart you are. Yeah. Learn it from this man, man right here. It's the smart, art of war. The smart man. <laughs> yes, yes. The smart man can play a fool, but the fool can't play the smart man. I'm here, yeah. I'm here with like, yeah. 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 They always, <laughs> they always act like you don't know shit. Yeah. Yeah. Chuckle it up. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you ain't shit, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, how, you you survived against many machines, like you know. Oh yeah, they tried to cancel me many times. Man, you I mean, It's crazy, yeah. man. You know, it's crazy though, because being a producer now, be it you know, I, I fund you know the majority of my own projects and yeah. all of that stuff. And then you know, I, the business is now you own it, then you license it and all that yeah. stuff. But I just I was just having this conversation literally on the way over here. There's still people that sit in these offices that believe that they can dictate and like. You know, even they start blaming it on, oh, our, our our sponsors aren't, you know, happy with that, or or oh, our, uh, oh my God. you know, well, that person, we're we're not comfortable <laughs> attaching our brand to that brand, like, it's it's still crazy. There's still like a list. What? And it blows my mind. And then when you ask them, you know, to stand on business, when you ask them, they're like, all right, well. Tell me why you feel this way about this individual. And, they get it, they get it. and then they, you don't, they, I, I, I need to do a Zoom. I need to talk to your business affairs. I need to talk to whoever is saying that that person can't come on the network or that person can't be a part. <laughs> and they never want to have that conversation because they don't have, you know what I mean? It's it's groupthink. You know what I mean? Like, even when I've been canceled, people were like, like yo, oh, you, we're going to can't, we don't associate with him anymore. I'm like, why? You know me. That's crazy. Like, so let's talk about the issue that you have. Because if I'm wrong, please correct me. You know, Minister Farrakhan told me that. He's like, yo, I never, only truth wants to be spewed out of my mouth. Falsism does us all a disservice. Oh, wow. So let's correct all things that are false, but let's only speak truth. And then in that sense, it's like, all right, well, let's deal with it. And the, and the real ones will have that conversation with you. But everybody else is just groupthink because everybody gets behind these microphones and on these cameras and they want to pretend mm. and, and pontificate about, like, how smart they are, how much they know. But really, they're just repeating something that somebody else told them. I mean, you deal with corporate blocking, but did they ever, like, call your phone and threaten you and stuff like that? Nah, I ain't, like, nobody could get to me like that like one i ain't really like have a like phone. like corporate not hood nigga. yeah I'm, like, I'm talking about like gangsta, nigga. i'm talking about like corporate like yeah you better watch well yourself. well that's like, the thing like IRS. Yeah, yeah that's that's <laughs> one he laughed me, but that's yeah. one of the ways they, they, they called me they called me a couple of times no but they kept saying mike we know you're gonna fight again so can we get something like, <laughs> what? what do you mean no she, mu she must have died because when she died she's still going good so. yeah <laughs> that you know what somebody i got a hold someone told me i got a hold of a uh uh, there were some private conversations that literally there was somebody said we have to make an example out of him. You you found your you found your uh, your way in the business to be at the right place at the right time. When you host the TV shows, you have the best position. Yeah. Kind of like a position where you can't be affected if everything goes wrong. Nigga, How do you find yourself? You look good yourself? from up here. You looking good. From yeah, right. I appreciate it's like a glow, you. Right? I appreciate Is you. Is it the shade? I'm going out here. Real good. I appreciate you. Tight. Get this nigga a carpet or something. You gave all the guys a life. <laughs> 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 Listen, <laughs> the turvin. Look how many people we help. DJ, the fly guy, his yeah. girl. All these, everybody got these names now. They can get jobs now. Man, that's they like I said. I'm here just to build platforms to give other people opportunities. I want to make as many million. I don't want to make millions. I want to make millionaires. I respect the fact that you survived the MTV curse. You know, <laughs> shows don't last long on MTV. Yo, we're they're heartless over there. Yo, we're one of the longest running shows in MTV Ever. history. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just we we uh twenty seasons and twenty plus seasons, uh in almost twenty years. When when you first went there with that, they thought it wasn't gonna last. They didn't understand no it. Way. They, I didn't think it was gonna last. Yeah, it, they didn't understand it. They didn't know what it was. I that's why I shot it with my own money initially. Oh hell no. And then I had to and that's why I owned it. You know what I mean? Because I was like, yo, I own this IP because I paid for That's it. That's a milestone in, in this yeah. country now. Yeah. So, yeah, you had all the Cat Williams and all those famous guys yeah. who popped off from that show. Like, Cat, Kev. Kevin don't ever want to give credit with credit due. Kevin Hart was was the original cast member of Wild and Out. Wow. That's my brother though. He's a I love good it. man. Yeah, yeah. You never had Mike swing through Wild Man, we've been begging. No, for young nigga years. ain't one man Wild and Out. Begging. Nigga. Begging. Really? But Mike would have punched somebody uh, out on Yeah, that's bitch. the thing. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nigga, I'm one of those niggas. I like to have fun. Yeah. I mean, I mean I still, <laughs> next season, that's what enough. we got to do? Yo, right? I hated the fact I made fun of my chin in that one episode. Oh, yeah. We, who kid was yeah, on I fouled, man. I was in the crowd. And what, next to two gorgeous, in between yeah, two gorgeous yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be like you. And man. then we had to get it. We had to get it. And I was like, no, because my chin was extra. I think it's because of the light. <laughs> And then he put it nah, in the bars. Yeah. Like, <laughs> while they were battling each other, like, who kissed Chin? I'm like, 
<laughs> yo, Mike, it's fucked up, man. I went, I was traumatized. That's why they called me. They're cold my, blooded, right? Yo, They're my cold. niece called me. Everybody was laughing at me for like weeks. That's yeah. the thing, man. We take the things. <laughs> I hate you. All right, it's security. <laughs> and we lift uh, them up. Don't hurt yourself. And bring, yeah, and bring joy and humor to it. That's how you overcome your insecurities. I mean, uh, you, 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 you got uh, a strong chin, Mike. Yeah, glass jaw. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny that you know I've heard some horrible things. They're vicious, though. Man. Yeah, they go and they go in on you hard. You never had a time where you're like, okay, nah, y'all gotta chill. Man, I got a thick skin. I ain't that. There ain't nothing. You. I'm nah, so, I've heard some really. I'm messed so up things. happy about life. Man, man. Like, there ain't nothing you can say to fuck up my day. There's nothing unless it's like something like obviously my children. Yeah, yeah of course. Are, uh, off limits, are, but it's like. Even if you talk about them, you know what I mean? I'll talk about their little life skin. It's a battle platform. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like, this is, we having fun. It's what the platform is all about. I say Wild and Out is the most progressive show on television because you can have people from all walks of life. You can have a, a, a dude, a homophobic dude from the trap battling a, a mm. transgender rapper and wow. they hug it out at the end. They all laugh, you know what I mean? People from, from, from you know, the Middle East uh, battling, you know, Somebody from Israeli. From yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> like it's it's and they go at it like, yo, we got uh, my man. Shouts out to Kosher Deal on there. He he come on there battling in the yarmulke, like going going at wow. Charlie Clips from Harlem. You know what I mean? Like, like real spitter. Yeah, like yeah. it's 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 beautiful, man. And I think you know, hopefully, when it goes down in history, people will say, yo, the one place where you can see young people getting yeah. along from all walks of life, but not running away from their differences, but embracing their differences yeah. and, and wearing it on their chest and talking that shit. I wonder 100 years from now, what style of rap will be out? It's going to be mental. Motherfuckers ain't going to use it. It's going to be yeah, bars. You're going to just tele teleporting bars they to each other. Stop that, nigga. <laughs> stop that. Nah, nigga, you, you gonna start hearing niggas in your head. Like, you have an alien rapping on there, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Yo, nope. Mike, what they gonna say about you a hundred years from now? That's a good Excuse question. Me? What they gonna say about you a hundred years from now? Um, passing through. <laughs> they ain't gonna say with humble, man. You a passing titan, through. man. Yeah, whatever, man. You're passing, you're passing through. Bro. He was just, I mean, that when you look at, but like, cause I know you study, you know, great titans throughout. Throughout history, when we think about everyone from like, I mean, Hercules, everybody from, you know, the real the real people that that walked this earth, the Mansa Musas, the mm. the 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 African warriors, or even like Hannibal. Like, well, I know this one thing. At the end of the game, they all say, you know, I'm sorry, God. Mm. You know, they thought they were God, and at the end of the day, God, please forgive me. I have nothing that I conquered. You know, yeah, shit like that. Wow. So they were just passing through, no matter yeah. what they did with on their time, they time here. Yeah. They realized they really wasn't God. When it came time to die, they realized they weren't God. Right. You know. That's powerful. But, like, do you feel like because that energy goes on, like, you obviously yeah. you got to you gotta humble yourself in front of the most high, but then when it's time, you still got that most high energy within you, right? Yeah, I just like to say, um, my my work speaks for itself. Mm. You know, I ain't gotta pop my shit. I let my work do it for me. No, man, at all. You know, I used to get mad when. See, you that's what he can do. That. Yeah, but I used to get mad when you don't let people know your successes. But that's the same well, vibe. It, like it, I don't like to it, brag. It, it, yeah, this but. his appearance show his success. Yeah. This the smile on, like to me, my children are my success. Yes, they are. Like I get yeah. to be like, man, and the fact that I get to have so much fun with them. I get yeah. to live vicariously through them. I get to you know what I mean? Like and and provide for them at, at a level that we can shut down Disneyland if we want to. Yeah. I take them all on a trip to Europe for a month or something like mm. that. And and see the world. Is that wild? Like when y'all go on vacation and then there's so many different personalities and you're like well, wait, well, because right right now most of my kids are are super young. I okay. mean, the the eldest I got, you know, me and Mariah have twins that are twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, That's an awesome age, right there. Yeah, yeah, they they loving it too. And then I have. Uh, a six year old and, and one that's about to be three that all kind of vibe together. Okay. So we go places and we, you know, shut it down, water Some of them park. Are closer to each other than others, right? Yeah, yeah. And it and so that I'm I'm looking forward to when like even the ones that are babies, mm. then we could just, yo, let's go shut down six flags. 
Let's go. Yo, let's go. Let's let's go. Let's go pull up to Disneyland and tell them we want it I'll when they to, turn all the lights I'll go off. Go to a Hawaii or something. Yeah, like that. That's that's what I can't wait for. And you know, we are gonna document the whole thing. I love yeah. going to a restaurant and all the kids together. We all eating Fire. at the big table yeah. and stuff and calling the people over. Or even like we talk about it. I'm pretty sure you understand this. Um, but even I talked to Quincy Jones about this. Mm-hmm. Like when you get to, I witnessed it. Mm-hmm. He's sitting at his crib. And all his children around the table, grown, all successful. I see those videos and photos. I, I told him, I was like, "How many kids you got?" He, I, he was like, "Oh, he up there? What? It, it's, it's like high up there." Yeah, yeah. They, it's, it's, it's some conversations that he laid on me. Let me know. Yeah. It, I was, I was going in the right direction. Fire. You know, and it's like it's really about you know when you think about the, the greatest men, they they pro, they produce greatness, and at a, the men of abundance produce abundance. You know, Bob Marley, Muhammad Ali. Quincy Jones, Dick Gregory, all of them. Like, like he, to- told, he told me about cloning like twenty years ago. What did he? T- what did he? What tip he gave you? Cloning. He talked about that a lot. Who time. you talking about? Quincy Jones. He was well ahead yeah. of. Technical. Dick Gregory talked to me a lot about cloning, but okay. you know how you know. Certainly, also too, they get up there in the majors. You You're not get- a clone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that. I'm not a clone, all right, kid. All right, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Right. Or the fact that are we all just living in a simulation? Yeah, that's 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 that real that shit of like where are we? We technology advances so far. How do we know that none of this shit is here? Like Mike said, yeah. none of this is real. It's all an illusion. Mike talked about deja vu earlier, and that's one of the things that they always say that might be a glitch. Because I be seeing shit that if, I I, if I'm on a, a strong dose of yeah. mushrooms, I think your guys are only here for my purpose of entertainment. You guys don't exist. This is all a joke. Only I exist, and this is I live alone. Oh, wow. yeah. Yo, that shrooms a dude. Sh- what shrooms does for me? <laughs> shrooms connects me. What? Like I will, I will, I will be talking. Like especially when I'm coming down for shrooms, I gotta call everybody. Like oh, I, yeah, I don't call nobody when I'm on. No, it. not on it. No, Keep your phone away. Yeah, yeah, but it's say, soon. Like when you coming told me down. To do that. Don't do that. Yo, you want to? Cause you feel like you could. Your energy is connected to everybody. Like oh, wow. you and I'm like, oh, that song was talking to me. Oh my! Yeah. Like like oh, like I, I know next next journey I go on, Mike gonna be talking to me, mm. and I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you what it was when I you know a few journeys ago I tapped into it, and even like you said, when you go there, you see what's right in front of you, but then the energy start talking to you, and it's like the energy like yo, you can operate, you can have this warrior energy if you want, you can have this ancient scholar's energy if you want. You just gotta tap into it, and it's all here for us, and you be like, oh wow. I never saw it like that. It's crazy. And it really lets you know, like, yo, this is all an illusion. Like, mm-hmm. And however we want to see it, we can operate in it. Is it bad that people that don't have money can't be in this situation? Because when you don't have money, you're, you're, you're... It's foggy. When you don't have money, you letting life's yeah. fake shit prevent you from walking into your true existence. Holy shit. That's really what it yeah. is. That's, a, that's what society is designed for, to not, to not let you see the greatness that everything is. But, you know, some people can just be um, financially bankrupt. And most people, and there's other people that are emotionally bankrupt. Yeah. And have a lot of physical money. Mm. You know what I mean? He said, it, what, Bob Marley said, I met a poor man one time, all he had was money? Yeah. <laughs> like, man. <laughs> like, that it's, is crazy. It, it's, it's one of those things, man, where when I get back to, like, kindred spirits, I get back to high frequencies, when you can really tap in, it, it allows you to see life differently. When did, you you. When, when did you start feeling this? I always thought something was going on. Like, just because, like you said, when as a kid, like, I'm, you know, I'm young, different. You, you, I'm different. I just didn't know. Like, I would. Yeah, you, you're still fucked up, but you know something special. Yeah, you just, like, you think different. You move different. Like, you know, you might talk to yourself. You might have an imaginary friend. Yeah. You might, you know, people look at you differently. I'm like, I was, but I, it was a level of confidence. That I was just like, yo, I'm I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be doing something, mm. and it's like, I don't know. And then probably once things started happening to me, once I started manifesting things, once I started speaking things into existence, once wow. I started avoiding, like my partners would get shot or oh. you know, so and I'm like, man, I was supposed to be right there with him. Mm, I feel all the time. Yeah, like I was. Dang, why did? And then it's like, you got like, all right, I got purpose. I'm supposed to do. And then when you start walking in your purpose. And then abundance starts to flow because you're walking in your purpose. Mm. And it's like, oh, I'm in that zone. I'm in my flow. Mm-hmm. And then that's when it's like, like to me, I won. 
You start, like, you start opening your own doors. Yeah, like I won you in life. I won the game of life. Yeah. Now this, I'm playing with the house money. Wow. I'm just trying to see. Like, let me see if I'm. I, <laughs> you're playing with the house money, but the game is still on. Yeah, but I already won. Yeah. Like I'm good. And you, but you're still hungry though, in a certain way. That's all I want to ask you that, Mike. Like, what, what, what's your continued drive? Like you, mm -hmm. a comp, you won. You won several times, even when they didn't want you to. When you came back and won again, yeah. like. What what keeps you going? I don't know. My insecurities, my, my You're the baddest man on the planet. Yeah, most of the the greatest entertainers are the most insecure ones. I mean, I I, I understand that too. Yeah. But the fact that it's like when you accomplish so much, even spiritually, even the way you've evolved yeah. as a man, it's like you you know. It's the cheat code for you at this point because you understand happiness where most people don't understand. What do they want from that? You know, that's the whole thing. What is it that you want from life? What is, what do you really when it's all over, what do you want? What is it that you want? Why do you have it? I ask myself that every want? day. And I thought to me and if, like to give people into my psychosis just a little bit, I think that might be why I'm so obsessed with my children. Mm. Because it's like at least I get to I'm living life through them now. Like, Cause oh. I was like, I'm done. I, I did it. I did it all. Psh, man, was it? I've, I've had every woman I could ever imagine. Oh yeah, I was. I was, I was Drove every car oh, I could oh, ever. Oh, yeah, bought yeah. every outfit. Watch like, oh, but like, yeah. and I, I was like, I did it. I've been no, to every place no, on the you planet. You didn't. Now you gotta start teaching. You didn't do that yet. Wow. You didn't do that yet. You didn't start teaching. And because I'm still learning. Yeah. Well, what, listen. And now I gotta give all of this yeah. away. And that's why I have my children. So you're I gonna can, learn to the day you die, but right. you, know, you still gotta teach. And then even in teaching, it's not just telling, it's not just pontificating, but it's providing. Mm. It's opening up and saying, let, <laughs> let let me show you, let me let me be a light, not just a noise. Mm. And so through that, hopefully, I mean, even in the times, because like I said, a lot of people don't understand me. A lot of people are confused. You know what it is? It's it's just the way they watch your career. Yeah. So you know, I me looking outside in, I wouldn't think that you'd have like you know people dying street shit yeah gangster shit you know what i'm saying because, because like, you don't have that energy so. yeah yeah it's like but I, I don't again it's funny i guess and you know this Pac was probably the best at it mm. because he was able to no matter what room he walked into from what i hear and no matter for and for what i see he could connect and relate to every kind of energy kids loved him you know what I mean? Of course, women loved him. Mm -hmm. You know, but but the Hill most Billy white boys white, loved him. Yeah, but most gangster street like yeah. he knew how to tap into whatever energy, whatever frequency everybody was on, and then not only did he know how to tap into it, he knew how to control it. Like at twenty five, that man changed the world. No, Iconic. That's, okay. yeah, that's you know what I mean, same energy here. Like when whether you walk in, you gotta have reverence, and you gotta step back and be like, yo. Mike, Mike Tyson. Yeah, you better think twice. Like, you, know, you, you hear Mike Tyson here before he even get out the car. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Dang, but, you know, every time I go all over the world, I go to Africa, you see, you know, some um, children, soldiers and everything, they always say, what was Tupac like? Yeah. That's all they say. All the uh, children, soldiers yeah. in Africa, what's Tupac like? What's Tupac like? What's Tupac like? And the crazy thing is, you know, again, when I think about energy, there was a Tupac before that Tupac, who he was named after. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And just the the and and he was a warrior, Native American, Na right. yeah, Native American warrior that put on for people. Tupac oh. Amuru, you know what I mean? Like, and it's just like it's energy, man. It's like you know, like that dude had a lot to do and knew it. But he he wasn't. He went to a performing arts school. Like he, was a, he knew how to. He knew the background how, is sick. Yeah, but he knew how to tap in. Yeah, mom is a Black to, Panther. He wanted to be a warrior. What were those conversations like? I mean, I know that's what the huh? kids in Africa ask you, but y'all had to have some cold ass conversations, man. Hey, um, he was always um fighting his demons, like we all are. Yeah, he always um he's always in confrontation with himself, with himself. or with people. He was just um, trying to find that balance. He wanted their respect. He didn't want them to almost like worship him. I said, but listen, it's not like that. Yeah. We're continuing to move up. But was yeah. a good soul at at his oh, core. Oh, listen, um. If he liked you, he'd do anything for you. Right. You know? But if he didn't, he'd do everything to, to dislike you. He was just an interesting personality. You got any new friends, Mike? 
like people that you like how you rock because you rocked with a lot of cats back uh, in the day like yeah. Pac and Bobby Brown mm. you got any new motherfuckers like, like who you now Bobby Brown another one of my yeah. fa most favorite people on the planet I don't mess with too many people unless they work for me yeah you ain't got no Man, that's crazy. Because to me, like, I'll tell you people that I... have I, very few few friends, street cats. Yeah, yeah, that, that you I came mean, up yeah. with. Like, to me, the people that I just admire, just their whole journey, Mike Tyson, mm. Bobby Brown, wow. Tupac, Chris Brown. Wow. Yeah, you Chris know, Brown's a cool kid. Yeah, just like, you, you could tell they got something, like you said, that they got something inside them <laughs> that, one, everyone's interested in. Everyone's fascinated by it, but you can also see... They trying to figure out how to walk as a human. Mm. They trying to, and it's like yeah, people can relate to that. Yeah, too. like when I see them, t all those dudes, and it's a few others too. But it's like I could do nothing but just like I just want to hug that dude <laughs> and just show like how how like yo, you a warrior, you a titan, like you a general out here, like <laughs> like that's that shit. You know what I mean We're fifty the... like that too? Mm. I, I have the same reverence. Fifty, uh, contrary to popular belief, Fifty Cent is one of. The, I admire him and wanted like I was like yo that's one of my favorite people on the planet mm. just what especially just watching him move you know what I mean like watching him like when when someone tries to count you out multiple times and you just keep pushing through I mean you're one of those standing guys standing on business like I mean I, I try to be like like I said what, like, what, what were your bad years I mean I everybody looks at you on TV and everything it looks like you've been successful uh, were there bad years were you depressed were you fucked oh, up man, i still get depressed really i still man like because again and you know what's crazy and i don't know what like i said my kids keep me going sometimes like you know obviously lots of therapy but because you be like i did it what else I, why am i here? like am i here just to receive more hate oh my god so you you, you, see you think you really you did, did it, did it? I, what, I and you're lost. Like it's like you have all the money in the world, and you don't know what to do. I don't, and especially because I, I'll tell you what depresses me. I would say when I see things like, and I, as I get to understand more, when I see journeys and stories like uh, Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby, oh wow, um, people that on the surface we were shown that we are supposed to praise these people and then we see all the demons that they were dealing mm. with in darkness and then their demons get so big that they then come and wipe them out completely wow. it's like man you might you 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 might have you might have was in the simulation a little too long it was a little overcooked oh, shit. and you had access to excess and you didn't know what to do with it and it's like like you gotta remember, like when, like when did Bill Cosby start being as low frequency as we later start getting to see? When did it start? Because clearly, we saw Doctor Huxtable. Exactly. When all of that darkness that he was dealing with, when did that start? Because I don't want none of that. <laughs> you know, That's like true. I don't want when, like, when when he was, was persuaded that everyone loved him. That's mm. when it happened. We didn't believe I was a different, I'm different nigga than everybody else. I'm special. That's when it got him. I could get away with it because I'm a special nigga. I'm not even a nigga, I'm a black person. And they were, you know, it, it would happen to me. It could happen to anybody. See, you I know? used to call that access to excess, but you took it even a step deep, deeper because it's not about what you have. Because mm. at the time he became. You are. Yes. Oh, yes. And you're like confused. You know, you think you, so it's like, is it on that side? He thought he was better than others. So therefore, he didn't play by the rules that everybody else played by. Well, he could have thought that, or maybe he wanted to believe he was better than others. Right. You know, he probably wanted to believe that. But listen, being in a position like that, at the time he was in that position, it was, um, listen, it was groundbreaking at the time. The yeah. Huxables, it was groundbreaking. I mean, but that's what I was saying. Like, we saw the journey. Yeah. And like, check, think about it. Think about real talk. Bill Cosby, say whatever happened, you know, say Bill Cosby would have would have transitioned and checked out of here, unplugged the game at like sixty five. Oh man, he would have went down as history, America's dad. Historical. The, one of the greatest black men that ever lived. But started still. the stu started the black man stunt, uh, the black stunt man's uh, union. So uh, paid for several 
hundreds of students to go to college. But this is what I found out. If you're a person that want to be up more than anybody wants you to be down, there's still a hope for you. Mm. I want to be up more than everybody else want me to be down. It's still hope. But that's so what we're talking about what depresses me is like, man, I don't want to I don't want to be overcooked. Oh. I don't want to stay in this simulation too long. I'm ready for the what's the next journey? And so then you, when you get to that place, you're like, shit. Like, I right, wait, is this depressed? Am I stuck? Cause first no. of all, what I've what my therapist explained to me, and even as I'm depression isn't sadness. Oh wow. It, depression is immobility. It's like not knowing what to do. It's when you're stuck. <laughs> Yeah, not Formal knowing paralysis. what to do. You, exactly. Yeah. And you can't, no matter how so, your man try to, you know, call you in. You ain't trying to listen to you. Yo, come outside. Yeah. There's somebody, your, your girl pull up. She want to cheer outside. you up. Yeah. She want to get, mm, I ain't into that. Yeah. Yo, you got, you know, somebody want to take you to church. I don't, I don't want that energy. And then you start beca- becoming a recluse. And then you're like looking for things to inspire you. Yeah. Oh man! So then you gotta go within and inspire yourself and keep yourself moving. Cause that's where I'm at right now. Now that I don't do that stuff no, no more, who am I? Who am I that I don't chase pussy no more? Who am I that I don't go out getting high anymore? Who yeah. are you now? You know, you use that for your crutches. Now that you can't use that no more, who are you? What are you doing? What's your existence now? Are you happy with what you have left of yourself? See, and you got you surrounded by a beautiful family yeah. that reminds you who you are. You, your dad. Yeah, I needed that, yes. Yeah. Your husband. You know what I mean? Like, you are these people that, that, those are titles that people love to call you. You know what I mean? Like, so, so maybe even that might be one of the reasons why, you know, I yearn for, for, to be a father so much because it's like, okay, this, y'all gonna keep me here. Mm. You know what I mean? Y'all gonna keep me pushing. Y'all gonna make me wanna be the best me that I could possibly be. Put myself uh, in the spaces where I could be my best self. Because other than that, I'm like, nigga, I love turning up. I love, like, hell sound fun. <laughs> hell where all the bad bitches are. <laughs> it's a lot of BBLs we all, in hell. We know, we know, yeah, yeah. We know where all the Instagram girls are going. All of y'all's going there. Yeah. Stop going to Dubai. I don't Dubai. want to be in no flat booty heaven. Fuck, I want to be up there. Stop for. going to Ghana. Yeah, they going, they going to Ghana now. That's crazy. They going there, you know, they, they buying bags everywhere. Yeah, I'm know. joking, but I'm saying like, <laughs> with the like low frequency, something like yeah. we see, that's why motherfuckers is, that's why the algorithms move the way that they do because the majority of people are having a good time in the low frequency shit. You don't give a fuck about materialism, right? Because the last time I hung out with you, you're, your Rolls Royce was dusty. You got yeah, a flat um, tire. You didn't even yeah. give a fuck about it. I, I mean, I, I I drove something here, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I got. But that's like I got like it's like I got a bunch of. Sh- I've been. I got the most expensive pair of shoes ever created. Oh, yeah, I got beautiful. two million dollar shoes. It's all right, they, they, yeah, diamond yeah. diamond shoes. I mean, I ain't gonna wear them now. But that's what I'm saying. Now I got on some. Shits. So, but it's like <laughs> they in the safe. Like I got car. I got more cars than I know what to do with. Yeah. So like now I give give them away. But now. I know the experience of why I got all that stuff. I got houses in multiple places. But it's like, you only can go to sleep in one at a time. Wow. Listen, I have no money, right? We we made, I did some show, we made some money, and I just bought a jacket, a $95,000 jacket, but I bought it for (laughs) sixty. My wife had a heart attack. (laughs) Oh, man. I just have to have buy my clothes. I just have to have my clothes back then. Because we we like to be fly. Yeah. We come. We we royalty. We know how to be fly. We love jewelry. That those are signs to that. That's what kings and and royalty operate on. You know what I mean? But I can't. So I'm never going to negate materialism. We love it, especially when ultimately at this stage in America, we they we started with nothing. Mm. So the fact that now we can flaunt that we can we can walk in abundance there's nothing wrong with that but once you get to that you realize i don't, I don't wear them watches no more i don't wear like i'll do it if we on wild and out or yeah. something like that. it's costume now oh, it's I'm not i just feel like it's just i don't care how much you pay for it if it shine yeah get here you fuck with jay-z you just, this is like a jay-z mentality yeah, I mean, but that, again, but see, but Jay will put that shit on when he need to, yeah, yeah. just to let the young like boys know. You know <laughs> let the like young the big, boys know. Yeah. Having the big ass chains and shit, but yeah, he doesn't let like, the show that he can. Yeah, and, and probably throw the shit away when he's done. <laughs> nigga got Picassos when you walk in his house. He got Bosky. Like, the shit on the wall costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Yo, word up. 
Word up. Like, I don't even got to come out the house to let y'all know I'm stupid rich. You ever interacted with him at his dinners and shit like that? Like, I'm not, like, you know I me, mean? I don't like to be outside like yeah. that, but I've had private conversations where we, yeah, where we chopped it up multiple occasions, man. Like, Jay was a, uh, definitely, he, you know, he, he put me up on game early on uh, when I was out here, and he was, he, he wasn't billionaire, Jay. You know, so you got different versions of Jay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you up. know, I don't think I really chopped it up with billionaire Jay too much. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, we did a couple of events. He let me, he let me catch a ride on on his private jet from back from <laughs> Chicago to New York one night. <laughs> you know, like like it was an Uber. Like, yeah, yeah, you get it. <laughs> but that was, and I was, you know, he still wasn't billionaire Jay mm. before. That might have been like fifteen years ago or something like that. So it's wow. crazy. Crazy. I got in a. Uh, I always say we. Me, him, Mike Kai's a couple other people oh, wow. back Mike in the day. We used up, to call it. We we had a story. We called ourselves the jury, the jury, because we it was twelve of us. Oh shit! Uh, and I remember Jay was flying down from New York to Atlanta to do Summer Jam with JD, and it was a. It, I feel like Leo booked the plane or whatever. This is still this is Def Jam. J, Jay wasn't he wasn't the president though, uh, and we got in a plane crash. What? But the plane was still on the ground. <laughs> it wasn't in the air. We had we flew in, did summer jam, all of that. I told this story a bunch of times on my show Yo. before. But on the way back, we was gonna go back. We was just flying in and out of Atlanta, mm. and we was gonna catch dinner and all of that stuff. So come back from dinner, and the the drivers are so excited that they're driving Jay Z around. And this was before Drumline and all that stuff. So it was, I was just wow, really? I was just in the in Jay's entourage. This this this, this might have been. 99, 2000, something like that. So you definitely interacted with Biggie then. Yeah. Well, I I interacted with Biggie, but I didn't know Biggie. That's crazy. But but, but yeah, so every they were so happy to be around uh Jay Hova <laughs> and the driver of the car service we're in, we pull up to the clear port. They forget to put the car in park. Oh no. And the plane's right there, like literally nah, right there. No way. And we all jumping out. And then soon as the job is a, uh, I believe it's a woman driver. The car just start rolling straight towards the plane, <laughs> as we're walking on the plane. It's like, and and then I guess she panicked, so she ran back to the car and thinking she's pushing the brake, she pushes the gas. Come on, oh, it goes even before. faster <laughs> and takes the nose of the G4 at the time oh, clear man. off. And needless to say, we had Not to spend a night. Durable, in, though, <laughs> yeah, we had oh. to spend a night in Atlanta, but we were like. Yo, and I remember it was 12 of us. We had to go get, you know, like 12 rooms at the, the Four Seasons or whatever. <laughs> Found a new plane in the morning, flew back to New York. But I, even then, Jay was like, you're going to be somebody. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, I would love Jay to tell me that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like, like young he, and hustling. And young Cass always said, Mike told me that when I was a kid. Jamie Foxx told me that. Will Smith. Yeah, he's a born Jay's winner. You had yeah. multiple yeah. legends tell you that. You definitely going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I just got to listen to these. He's a born things. winner. Yeah. Young people are like that. During your music days, how many records you've done that never came out with like some legends? That so many. I mean, I'm I did. mad that you didn't give me. Yeah, like, <laughs> man. like I mean, because that was the thing. You like DMX? I, nah. Ooh, I wish. Look, no, another person is one of my favorite people on this mm. planet. But I didn't get a chance to get in the studio with him because that was the thing. My my music career was fucked up because everybody has such high expectations mm -hmm. and everybody was calling me the next Will Smith. So I was oh, making records wow. with Tone and Pope because yeah. they did Big Willie. So I was Track making masters. Yeah, I was making records with Puff and Puff was trying to make me up. Puff gave me my probably my most fire record though. Yeah. And it, it was on my album, but it was tucked on my album. The record Puff produced and Mary J. Blige sang the hook. Called Whenever You Need Me. Uh, but like that, I was like, my my album budget had to be three, four million dollars. That's back in the wow. days, right? Yeah, like, yeah back in the days, I worked right? with, obviously, all the records that R. Kelly it did. It was a lot of money back then. Yeah, R. Kelly did half the album. <laughs> Puff did mad songs. Pharrell did six songs that never came. Not six, maybe like three songs that never came out. Wow. I worked with him a bunch of times, but like we probably completed like three. You worked with Timberland too? You still want to do it though? You still want to do Well, now I got album? my own record label. I got yeah. my own artist. So like I live because I'm a musician, so I live vicariously through them. So you ever blaze with them, do sessions with them. Always, you know, I got one of these up in, in Burbank. We chilling. Yeah, like we and so, well, Mike, we gotta go there and check out the artists. Yeah. Spit some bars. That's you know, another that, a new show man, I got. You can spit bars. Hell yeah! Challenge you, nigga. On Wildin' Out. Yeah, spit some bars, nigga. <laughs> you heard oh, it here. Yeah. Mike said he coming to Wildin' Out on Hot Five. some shit for me. I nigga. got you. Say what? Spitting bars, Can nigga. You please get the Titan. 
to, to wild it out. Let's go, man. I'll, I'll throw nigga. him in the car. I'll Let, bring him myself. If he doesn't punch me in the yeah. face. But that's <laughs> one of the new shows we got. It's called Future Superstars. It oh, really wow. is be being introduced to the world as a music man. Where I'm bringing all my new artists. We put them on the road, and uh, it's going. It's, it debuts on VH1 and BET in mm. a few months. Wow. But it's like so. That's where I get to live vicariously through all of the new young cats. I would love to see Mike on Well and Out. That Let's be, make it happen. I like rap will battle you. Uh, I, 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 I'm gonna battle less. you. I'll do whatever I need what? to do. Battle you. I'm gonna battle you. I'll battle you in French. What? I'm like, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Parce que je peux pas. Get nah, that shit right now. Get him, Mike. You know what I'm Tell saying? him some shit. <laughs> Talk about his chin, Mike. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. So yo. you can't win with that big ass chin? Yo, come on, man. <laughs> come on. Mike. I love you, man. Yo, come on, Mike. You're supposed to be standing up for me, man. <laughs> the motherfucker said your chin, huh? <laughs> Now, see, all our coming up, people used to say me and Who Kid look alike. Yeah. So he used to call us. Well, we had the same haircut back then. We had the the, the fate. And then it's like the, you know, we got the neck. We got He looks like a kid. That's why I'm like, yo. You do too. Well, he does look like a big kid, yes. (laughs) (laughs) His head on backwards. (laughs) No, it's good to survive, like, the game the way, like, we're like unicorns in this business. And there's not many. People are. There's no other Nick Cannon. Mm-hmm. No other who can. There's no other, no other who can. So it's no good to be Mike that Titan. individual. I've always say people that it's best to be a unicorn in this business because not everybody can struggle and hustle like us. Yeah. I still love working. Hey, you listen. See? That's what's life for. Look at Mike. Man. He's work. He has the biggest podcast. No, listen, he loves working. Yeah. No struggle. No progress. He's at life's every, about progress. Life's all about too. Like cartoons. <laughs> He was on freaking Adult Swim. Yes, Fire, yeah. though. Like the hottest show out there. Talking shit. My man died, though. Who? I'm um, the pigeon. Oh, the pigeon died? Oh, the in the Norman, Norman. Norman. The voice. Yeah. Really? Norm, Norm, Norm McDonald. Yes, yeah, Norm oh, McDonald. Oh, he passed away. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Rest in peace to Norm McDonald. Brilliant comedian. Awesome. The be- that people always say, how was it working with him? I said, I never was on in the studio when we mm. were both different times. yeah. yeah. Do Cat Williams give you the same respect for stand up? Like you know, it's hard to get him fucking happy and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, he he just did he did Wildin' Out season twenty. He came mm-hmm. back. It's, I've never had a, a confrontation comedians? conflict. Probably yeah. it's only been love and admiration with me and Cat. How much you used to get paid when you did this? Oh before? wow, you got pay me the blaze too. I mean, Mike, Mike, I'll give you whatever, Mike. <laughs> you said it. Don't yeah, fuck whatever. around. Yeah, whatever. Don't fuck around, man. Well, whatever blaze, you need, man. man. <laughs> I, I, man, whatever offerings to the God, I, I, I'll, I'll make it happen. Oh, <laughs> your head I flew. Who? <laughs> <laughs> He's not rhyming. He's like, <laughs> uh, you coming what, after me, Mike? Whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blue kid, the new kid. <laughs> uh, uh, this is beautiful. Mike, you coming at me hard? Oh, now. man, am I? <laughs> Yo, somebody called Drake right <laughs> over here, man. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did. You ain't shit. Right. Okay. I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> How much you were getting paid when you did stand up in the beginning? Was it fifty dollars? Was it? Nah, they used to pay you at the improv. They used to pay you in. How you get the nerve to do that? Shit? I was a kid. <laughs> I had it. They used to pay you in dinner. Come on, man. Seven dollars in that. dinner. I mean, I got it. Yo. Yeah, listen, get... yeah. Seven dollars dinner in, in dinner at the improv. I imagine Soul Train dancers. That's they and got chicken. Back. They yeah. paid you a Kentucky Fried Chicken. I was, I was a Soul Train dancer too. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Get the fuck out of here, man. It's, it's, fo- it's footage on Soul Train <laughs> at 15. Because I would come lying, up man. I would come up from the hood and I didn't have anything to do in LA. So we stand in line over there at Paramount. And, right right there, oh, and I'll be like, oh shit, there's some bad bitches in line. And we get out <laughs> and wait. And they're like, what y'all waiting on? We gonna go dance on Soul Train. <laughs> and I tell you even like this, even if I, Wilder story. See, look. Nah, stop that. Oh bullshit. my god. You had to scrabble too. Yeah. <laughs> no, get the fuck. He no scrabble. No. Mr. He Nick. Nick Cannon. <laughs> he's become one of the biggest stars in all sports by winning the 1997 Masters Golf Tournament. You? No, that's what that's you. That's the name. I had to spell oh. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. No way. Oh, I can't wait to see your move after you get it. <laughs> no way. And he starts dancing after? Yeah. I mean, I used to go up there every month. They would film every month. No way. Oh, oh, hey, oh. Hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, hey. hey. That was like I was at my Diddy Bop right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm, and there was, there's, oh, I'm telling you, man. You don't cringe oh, when you see stuff like that. Not, man, I was living. <laughs> that was beautiful. I was, a, I was not old enough to be in there. 
I was 15 years old. Oh, it was beautiful, man. Yo, I'm gonna tell you like this. <laughs> Holy my my homegirl's mom was one of the baddest, coldest soul train. What was her people. name? Oh, wow. Her name was Siri. Oh, Ooh, nigga, the eighties was a motherfucker. <laughs> you could do whatever you want in the eighties. It wasn't no, it wasn't no the social 90s, media. Nineties came around, so it got a little weird. People started dying. Everybody started dying. Yeah, and everybody was getting sick. So the eighties was the was the heyday. I mean, you was you was the king of the eighties. Yeah, yeah. It was just listen. The 80s with magic. Yeah. Tyson fight. You know? Seeing Michael motherfucking Jackson come up. Michael Jackson, listen. I was telling this so Even all of us with our egos, we all knew Michael was the king. He was uh, the one. Yeah, he was bigger than all of us. He was <laughs> big. That's crazy. I you Yo, is that, is that picture? Big. I mean, what they... Is that a real picture? Oh, he said it was fake. Oh, I was about yeah. to say, that had to be a fake everybody. picture. Everybody, like, everybody together? together? No, nah, some of them was dead, I think, by then. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was like, that's a cold that, motherfucking that's the picture. That's coldest come out photo ever, man. But like, that's what them Tyson fights was, though. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, it, I mean, today people still show up for the fights, but it mm -hmm. wasn't nothing. Like, we'd be sitting at home, like, yo, who are these guys? But no, no, was interesting in the fights back then. There you go. You have, listen, you have a congressman sitting next to a prostitute. You have a pimp <laughs> next nah. to the yeah. Oh, it was this pimp be sitting next to the police chief. Yeah. <laughs> The pet be sitting next to the police chief. Oh my lord! Man, that, like I said, like even to sit here next to you now, man. And Listen, when I was a young boy greatness. and stuff, the guys I looked up to was like um, Milton Berle and all those guys, George yeah. Burns. Those was all the guys that were right. showing us around. Frank Sinatra. I got, I got to kick it with. Uh, I, I ain't stealing your your cushion, my no, man. Please, it's for please. I, 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 you, no, you steal some shit from Mike. Yeah, you might yeah. not make oh, it out. No. You good. You good. <laughs> Oh, Listen, okay. You're giving you mad shit right now. Keeping shit with you. <laughs> Good looking. Hey. I appreciate it. I hope you. this don't mean we have to wrap up really quick. No, no, no. We still talking. Oh, but, and we got to go ride outside, too. So oh, I, the ride. I, I love being in your presence, man. Thank like, you, brother. I, I'm Thank one of them things. Like, I, I got a chance to sit in, in the presence of some some people. And I just like to soak up the game. Like, I said, rest in peace, Harry That's Belafonte. That's how I felt when I, ooh, great. Harry Belafonte. That's how I was around him. I was just... I was starstruck. I said, I'm around the Freedom Fighter. Yeah. yeah. To me, I, you know, I know you thought it was crazy. He, he told me, he told me, a, um, he told me a story about he had to go drop off like fifty thousand dollars to Martin Luther King, him and Sidney Poitier, and they had to ride through the South with fifty thousand cash in the in the sixties. I was like, that's a movie. That's like two hundred fifty five hundred racks right no. there. No. That's your two niggas life don't mean nothing, you just get killed. <laughs> right. Don't mean nothing. Not even a law. Right? Not even a law in the city. What? Yeah. <laughs> 50, 60, you're not, you're not even on the city. Two of the richest, most successful black men ever if you get pulled over. Oh, with that. You niggas are dying. <laughs> I, who, who, you, where you guys the, going in this fancy car? car. <laughs> this fucking fancy car. They definitely killing you because they're taking yeah. that money. Harry Billy. You, 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 you huh? want them up in there, nigga. You're, yeah. <laughs> Your name's well, Sydney. I got something for you, <laughs> Where you get all this money from, you boy? You one of those Martin Luther King niggas, aren't you? <laughs> Telling you. I mean, coming up in the 80s, you dealt with some of that racism. Yeah, you ever stuff think too? about what people had to go through for us to live the life we live now? Exactly. I okay. never dealt with I mean, I deal with, to me, that's why I like Donald Trump. I like my racism overtly in my face. Yeah, telling you straight up. I, like, now it's too, they, they try to dance around this shit. Mm. And that's, you know, I get in trouble all the time because I be calling shit out. And then, you know, I I like the truth. I like but everybody ain't everybody ain't built for the truth. It's funny you talk about Trump. Uh, you hung out with the old Kanye. What do you think of the new one? You know do you currently I know both of them. Oh you so, saw so, so give us the the differences. It's another <laughs> another part I, I pray for that dude every yeah. day. Because again, I don't wanna say we probably struggle with a lot of the same things, but it's like he's on another level of like Awareness and everything. Not right? even awareness yeah. of the the Struggle. access to access. He don't know what's real in a simulation. Oh shit! So sometimes you gotta shake shit up to be like, "Am I living?" Mm. So that's his thought process when he's like, he's confused and he lashes out. Cause he, cause he know he's thinking on another frequency. And then like, language is primitive. So if you and especially like you see Kanye, if you ever see Kanye, he's always struggling to get out what he really feels mm. in an interview, or any, he's trying to say so many things. His mind is moving so fast. Yeah, yeah. He's never laid back, and it's just like he's sh like 
there's so much inside of him and he's trying to shake shit up. And that's why we experience him the best way through his music because he had time to cultivate it. He had time to be this person on this song. He had time to share this message on this song. You know what I mean? And that's why he is a genius, even in any step into the world of fashion. And I'm pretty sure he'd be an amazing artist as well, like actual, you know, painting or some uh, a visual artist. Because mm -hmm. And then all of his videos, yeah. like, because he got so much inside of him. And you can't get all of that in the interview. Like, if you see, like, it you ask like him, 10 hours or some yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what you, what you think is going to turn out with him? I think his fans love him. His fans will keep him going. Just like your fans oh, love you. Like your like Chris mm -hmm. Brown fans love him. Like people who have the, that level. I, I don't have those type of fans. I don't have those type. I've never been I, where you got fanatics, where people love. You'd be surprised, brother. No, no, no. But I'm just, is it the, like I admire it. Like I'm, a, I'm like, I'm the, the regular nigga. Like, mm -hmm. you know, somebody told me the, uh, they like walked up to me because the funny thing, my kids and Kanye's kids play basketball at the same spot. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's funny. One of the parents or like family members walked up to me and was like, "Yo, we hear a lot of times and we see there's a lot of celebrities here that are approachable. We call it we call it uh, you will let me get a picture celebrity." <laughs> It's like it's like a lot of these people up here ain't you can't say let me get a picture to them. It's like Nikki, hey, let me get a picture. I was like, I tell you, I'm going to let me get a picture celebrity. I don't know if Mike is a let me get a picture celebrity. Nah, Mike told a nigga earlier, I ain't signing your shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here. But, <laughs> Mike is that it. He, I am a let me get a picture. <laughs> hey, Nick, man, let me get a picture. Nigga, come on. That's, you know, I, I never thought about it like that. Thinking, People know your name. Be disrespectful. Yeah. That's crazy. You cut all of that bullshit off because yeah. you know it could go a different way. Yeah. Somebody say some shit to me. I'm like, oh, you wilding out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody say some shit different to Mike. Oh, it's over. Shit is moving. <laughs> Listen, I was in the molecules was, is moving. I was in one of these stores and I was shopping with my wife, right? And this guy said, Mike, please, please, Mike, take let me be your stylist. I said, What the fuck I need a stylist for? <laughs> I dress my own stuff. Yeah. And he said, well, Thank Mike Tyson for letting me turning me down. I said, Well, I don't want to be I don't want to be you to be in my fucking life. <laughs> you motherfucker. You strange to go ask me to be my stylist, you piece. Oh, I want listen. I'm one of those guys. I get in. What you what you get going? Oh, nigga. <laughs> oh man. Oh, what you be in my fucking life? Yeah, I'm yeah, mad yeah. that you even got to oh, step man. this close to me. It's crazy, man. I think we both like experienced like the the hustler, like Kanye West, like the the yeah. first, like he was out right. there. We like made, Kanye was making beats on the two way. Y'all made like mad songs back then too. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, on the studio, heavy. Yeah, I mean, I was. What do you think is going well, on with him? I mean, now? you were a rapper. What did you think about him telling you he wants to rap? I thought, I mean, he was, he he's always been the same Kanye. Yeah. So fashion, all of that, he all he spoke all of that into existence. Wow. So he was always we were like this nigga crazy. <laughs> like we were like, yeah, hey, you gonna do? Did everything he said he was gonna do? Wow. Even the president stuff. Yeah. Like he was saying that back. He's like he always was like that. And I was just like we respected. He was just one of the hot producers. I knew him like obviously. He was rocking you, with you. Jay. Respected him as a producer, or hundred percent. But even yeah. as an MC, no, no, he no, he I, always rap. He told me he rap better than me. Like he always what? like because we made mad songs. He's like, yeah. man, you got to say it like this. I learned so much from him. Oh, even, wow. even in that sense too. So, but he just knew like even as a producer where he knew that they would say he's like I got to be the best rapper. I got to be better than all the other rappers because they don't respect me as a producer. And he's like same thing to you, nigga. He's like you coming from TV. You got to be better than these rap niggas because if not. You the kid from Nickelodeon. Oh, shit. And Kanye know how to put it in really cold, right? Yeah. You just that kid from Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> he has no um, compassion whatsoever. He just uh, about speaks his feelings, truth. Right? About nobody's feelings. Like, what? <laughs> he speaks his truth. Did you ever see Wild and Out being in a... Uh, festival format, like you guys are touring. Yeah, and shit. well, you know, we, big ass shows. Yeah, we sold out the guard and all that shit. Like, what? That's yeah. fire, yo. Twenty thousand, nigga. Yeah, I like Walker Vlocka does a couple of your shows. Yeah, yeah, he song. pull up like because yeah. that's now we could we do old school, new school. So we let the new new artists open up and we let like a Waka, Rick Ross, or somebody like that mm. in the show and headline it. So we've been touring for oh shoot, it's gonna be a decade soon. Like we've been wow. touring, we've been touring mm. probably since the mid-teens, you know what I mean? So the um, 
you know, our first, we, we did a show about touring. We did colleges first and went to London and all of that. And even, you know, took the young boy who's killing it right now, Matt Rife, he was on oh, it. You wow. know what I mean? Like, so we've been doing this. Um, and then now for it to be, you know, one of the groundbreaking music and comedy tours, the festivals is the next play. So I think the Wild and Out Festival, we're going to do cruises too. Oh, wow. The, the, the Wild and Wet. Oh, wow. shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, going to be there for yeah, that. Yeah, you got to pull up. There's a lot gonna, of moisture out there. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the Wild and Out Goddess is a big deal. <laughs> but so that and a festival. Like, I think mm. we should do a, a music and comedy festival. That would be beautiful. That's cool. what we'll bring Mike out. We'll do it in <clears throat> Vegas. So he yeah. ain't, ain't got to go far. I'm, but I'm fucking spitting to turn you out. Uh, spitting. Uh, uh, he talking to you, who kid? I'm nervous. I'm going to be <laughs> spitting, who? I love the fact that you gave like respect to battle rap. Like, you know, was that an experiment, or you were researching, or nah, I had what? to. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what it what it was, cause I was when wilding out the first few seasons before I took a break and just stopped, got married and shit. Mm. I feel like we had were the first time we had like Atheon Crockett on there. Yeah, that's right. You know, like real cast that was really super talented with rap, but there was no platforms. There, there, the format of battling. Wasn't even a thing yet. So yeah. the first time we took our battling, it was almost from snapping and, and, and cracking on one another like comedians Mama do, but jokes. we just did it to the beat. <laughs> yeah, and then hard. so once we went away and I would see these battle rap niggas on YouTube, I was like, that's what we used to do on Wild and Out. Mm. So I was like, if I ever do it again, I'm going to go get them. Like I was inspired by like the oh. conceited, the Hitman Hollers, the Charlie Clips. The loaded Lux, wow. you, know, you know what I mean? Like I would see them. Loaded like, Lux, yeah. legend, man. That, but I would see that, and I'm like, they had so many theatrics in their show. I was <laughs> like, I was rapping. Your mother been with others. And uh, like, that's out, yeah, that was your mother been with others. That's a bar. Yo, your boy, you come in at that me. Your good. mother's yeah. been with others. Yeah, nigga. you don't even know if your brother is your brother. Oh, oh that's another bar. <laughs> I feel that one. Come, please. I don't even know that's what. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I'm on a losing side. Can I get somebody else? Anybody else back there? <laughs> That's the rule, right? If you suck, you get you somebody. Gotta, you got to pull somebody. You got to pull like, one of your homies yeah, to the yeah, front. Well, play, I'm that guy. Got to play <laughs> tag, bro. <laughs> you are in. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing how, you know, you gave birth to a lot of things and you just, you know. You don't get the credit for that shit, man. Now, like, you know, because it's corporate. Yeah, yeah I'm the number corporate. one host on television. Mm. Well, now, I'm, Ryan doing this uh will of fortune shit he might okay. he might he might have tried i gotta go get i gotta go get a permanent game show mm. but see the difference with me like i love will of fortune but he didn't create that oh okay i want to go create the next will of fortune i want i want that merv griffin money yeah merv griffin said he was on his yacht playing hangman with his daughter when he came up and created will of fortune sheesh playing hangman with his with his kids Ew. and that's how he created will of fortune I want that type of shit. So I'm I'm looking in my mind. I got you know we got a bunch of stuff in development, but you know based off obviously the mass singer is still the number one show. Yeah. We we were trying to get you on that too, man. Oh, I was, I was been singing. No, but honestly, if you had a mask on on, on Mike, can they hide him? Like I've been yeah. singing Luciana Pavarotti. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I never thought it was me. It ain't too late, Mike. We filming now. Yo, get Mike on there, please. That would be gangster. Wow. My oh. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. Bro, I was an he just yeah, Yo, we ever it. gonna see the one man show again? Yes, my mo my wife, my mom, my wife is writing. She's writing parts of it. She's man, the well, the the Broadway show was brilliant. Did you see it? Yeah, and the Brad Pitt shit was funny as hell. Yeah, you saw that part of the Brad Pitt. Oh God, is it? But are you? Are they ever gonna put that out? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it again. Yo, ask uh, him why he didn't fuck Brad Pitt up, man. I, the crazy thing, I had heard about them them stories. Oh, you uh, heard about that? Even like before, before he can't, yeah. yeah. Like you hear like Mike fucked some of these motherfuckers up over his. Really? Yeah. Oh. I was a, such a different person back. Then. <laughs> Why would you even play what was Mike's? Why he give Brad Pitt a pass? Was, you know, but we had some. We weren't together no more, but we were still fucking. Though. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. We were going through a divorce, but we were still fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. That's how it happens, Mike. You, and then one day I come. I'm ringing the door. She's not answering. What the fuck? And I'm getting ready to leave. And then I see a car coming down. But I see somebody in the car. I'm thinking there's some blonde chick that works on the head of the class with No her. way. But she's some blonde guy. She's probably giving head to her. <laughs> head of the class. <laughs> 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 I said, holy shit. Yo, you're the 
shit. Yo, can you uh, imagine like you get caught and Mike Tyson is the guy you gotta fuck it like the, the, the see, bad See, Brad knew what the fuck he was doing though. He was playing with fire. Did, did you see how he was dressed? He had like some weird ass hippie Man. gear. Man, I Brad, think I would have fucked him up because of that. That was on Fight Club. <laughs> shit. Brad was on that. That was Fight Club, Brad. <laughs> you, that was Snatch, Brad. Actually, no, nah, that was Brad before he was like. No, that's what I'm saying. He was in. He was a crazy. He was oh, crazy. He's crazy, crazy, crazy. He was playing with fire. But I'm just oh, saying to wow. myself, what kind of guy? What kind of life has I had? I just think, God. Damn. Bro, Brad, yeah, that's so random, dogs. Like, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> Mike, Mike gave him a pass. Uh, I love that stand up, man. Yeah, that, we, I wanted, cause I remember, like, I think I might have, I, I think I might have came in late or something like that, cause you know, bro, that shit is small. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll, oh, I'll catch the beginning again. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not, I never saw the yeah, beginning. You usually do two shows a day, right? Yeah, I used okay. to on Broadway. But that they need are they, they need to put that out on a streaming server like you said if you do it again like mm. I'm pulling up. Nice. We did it all over the world. Even we did with people that didn't even speak the language. We had letters underneath. Oh really? Yeah. Subtitles? Yeah. Oh shit, that's gangster. Yo. That's fire. Mike Tyson. You know, he's done so much you can't even remember everything. Yeah, I'm very Too much, I'm yeah. very grateful for everything. Yeah, I said I, I forgot more than you'll ever know. I think I'll be happy with Brad Pitt. My wife be Brad Pitt head. Not me. I'll be happy. Fuck that. Brad Pitt is like a legend. I mean, he is a legend, but like, I, I you can know him. You in your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, uh, yo. You know what I mean? Hey, that's Who a legend. Kid? I don't mind if it, I don't mind Brad Fucker. That's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> He's shooting at you right now. Man, I don't know about it. Just walling out energy. <laughs> Turn Mike into some mother motherfucker. You see what you did there? Nah, nah, he, yo, right. he's ready for walling out. Nah, he's ready. Wife, yo. He's ready. Yo, he's ready he's for walling out, man. Yeah, Mike, Mike over here Mike, cloudy. He's supposed to be a nice guy. This is a nice guy. He hit the nerve, though. <laughs> I got bars. <laughs> he got bars. Let me find out Mike is walling, man. This guy's crazy. Yo. Man. Twenty years from now, man, or ten years from now, where is Nick Cannon gonna be? Do you, you can tell you, you can see your future. Man, I, I again, time is man-made, so oh. I, I am twenty years from now. Wow, yeah, man, how old we are? I'm you sitting just, here, right? Julius Caesar told us how old we were. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's gangster. This is so you know, like I said, I, I, I come. How did Socrates know how old he was? Exactly. How did Alexander the Great how know how old they were? They're before Caesar. How did they go by the time system? There was none. We created that. Yeah. Mm. Human beings created time, there's no doubt. Only eternity. Yeah. Only eternity. So that's just like I, I'm not governed by all of these systems. That's why that's why I wear the turban. Wow. It's a sign of sovereignty. Let me know I can forever be young in respect and discipline based off of I, all of that stuff that controls everybody else don't control me. Devils on your back every day, huh? Well, I'm, 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 I wake well, up excited he, about the well, challenge. He's he scared of me. Go. Like this motherfucker to woke up again. Sheesh. I remember I was in a, I was in a, um, I was in the hospital dealing with my lupus shit, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's whatever the fucking morphine drip they put me on. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but good you be having stuff. these crazy ass dreams, and I had a dream. I was because first of all, you sleep all day long. I had a dream that I was in the locker room with the devil. In an empty locker room and he was so like I thought he was the coach, but he was he was talking shit like you just won't die. What? He's like you fuck you won't die. And I was like I'm not going to. Like <laughs> and he was mad. He was pacing like a coach. And then like his energy like he just kept his, he just kept fuck? transforming and shit. I said it was probably the morphine. But it was like <laughs> but he kept telling me like but he was like in like that coach speech like yeah. where they be talking all loud and wow. throwing shit and like <laughs> he was just mad that I wouldn't die. Damn, man. I was like that's how that motherfucker be every day when I get up. Man, and I got up out that hospital right there like <clears throat> I, when I woke up I left. Oh wow. I was like yeah but I was like he coming for, he want me. I was like I'm out of here. Like people die in hospitals. Not to end on it. I know. Cool. No, no, you be like, no, it has people like thinking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like that. But Jesus. You think, wow, that, you think, wow, that was the devil doing that. I know. That, I that, had was, that. that, that was, was him. That was a game on hot box. <laughs> <laughs> that was him. 
Don't let them win. That's nah, the bottom that's line. Amazing, man. You know, it, it, I would love to get like super detailed out with Nick Cannon. This would be like a five hour fucking show, man. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. Oh my God. Biopic? Anything? Any kind nah, of. Nah, I ain't ready Netflix. for that yet. I ain't I ready mean, for that yet. That's nah, crazy. all the businesses you have already at your age. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'll keep pushing. Like I said, I'm trying to put on for my. My next generation. You ever thought about you in a hotel or a casino or something like that? That should be wilding out. Casino could be crazy. We got the restaurants now. Wow. Oh, you know I got my restaurant with in Miami, oh. South Beach? Oh. Your man, Stevie, Stevie D. D. I live across the street. Right, you just moved yeah, over man, there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's okay. a nice ass neighborhood. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, nigga, you be running to motherfucking alligators. Right <laughs> yeah. <now. laughs> they got the, alligators. They got, we got beautiful homes over there in it's the Everglades, nigga. Yo, they got it's the right Everglades. there. Beautiful neighborhood. Those white people got us in the Everglades, gonna kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you being a you being an exec, has there any, ever been an exec that fuck with you? Like you hate, like you fuck with, and you, you overcame it. They no longer execs. Wow. Yeah, that. Like, yeah, I lived them. Yeah. Everybody yeah. that used to give me problems at networks and regular, they don't, they ain't there no more. Wow. Yeah, I lasted them. Yeah. Fuck with Nick Cannon, dog. I've been at. At uh, MTV and all that stuff, longer than anybody, any executive. You've seen him come and go. Yeah. And come back again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. That's crazy, man. Man, I already, man. Being in Nick Cannon's shoes, man. You should just the, have a camera just in your shoes. The, the $2 million ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to end it right there, Mike. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, though. You gotta show me those shoes, by the way. Uh, I, I, I photo. Yeah, one moment, one photo. moment. Uh -huh. They're trying to tell me wrap it up, but listen, so we got hundreds of millions of people right there. <laughs> yeah, right there, right there. We want them. To, we want you to tell them how can they get in touch with you? When can they see you again? Yo, at Nick Cannon, all things at Nick Cannon. You know what I mean? And obviously, all of the shows, everything. You know, I got my daily Cannon show each and every day. Uh, on AMP, and then, you know, everything else is all connected. That's the beauty of it right now. You just type my name in, everything yeah, I do come up. up. Wow. Go ahead, tap his name and see what comes up. <laughs> That's crazy. Probably a picture of Mariah. Well, now I just said so. See? Yeah. I told wow. you. <laughs> you look good, though. Look how good you look, nigga. You look good. That's a good one, too. People were angry, though. Yeah. That's a hate They're still thing. mad. They're still mad till this That's day. Huh? That's, That's one of those mad. hate flicks. You know, they put hate on it. That's yeah. a hate flick. I was, I was living, Mike. <laughs> He's still alive. That, that was the beginning of life. You're really living there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that tattoo on your back of hers, gangster. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, like I had to show she had when a woman who has everything. Yeah. You know, you gotta show her you really love her. I said, you know, I, I, I put Haley Berry on my back, but I ain't really she, fucking her. Uh, well, say, hey, yet. Oh, maybe I might. You gave up already. Yeah. <laughs> she could be in a wheelchair. I interviewed her before <laughs> too. You, I interviewed her. No, I interviewed her in hot boxing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she, I, uh, she got a beautiful spirit. She's awesome. I love her, man. I've always had a crush on her. I don't she's care if she's awesome. hundred. I'm here. Hallie, yeah, Mariah, Mariah, Janet. Yeah. Um. All of them. Whitney, nigga. Whitney. Vanessa Williams. Oh, Vanessa Williams. People. She was the beginnings yes. of uh, the crush. Yes. You know. Miss America. With the, with the with the scandal, you survived that whole era, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, yo. And then even the next generation, the Nia Longs, the the uh, the the TLCs. The, yeah, you know, I'm telling you. What their names now? I mean, they still they still. What their names? Yeah. There's some new ones out there. Oh, the new name? new ones. Oh, they love they loving Lori Harvey now. Yeah. Uh -huh. They loving Sweetie now. They love in uh, Summer Walker. I don't know nobody. I'm an old school. <laughs> yeah, and then I said, you know, the Kardashians, they still got it all on lock. You ever saw Aston Martin Speedster? Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Put an Aston Martin Speedster, please. We got to see the Aston Martin Speedster. Yeah, I'm so happy. No one knows. I'm saying you don't know the car. What the fuck? Yeah, man. I'm a, this I'm, is where I'm gonna go when I go to Europe to the yeah. France to get in hot. I'm, I'm gonna rent that one. Yeah, I'm, I am a car guy. What are the cars you dealing with? Um, I mean all of Look, them. Look, I'm so in love with that car, man. It's amazing. I, I'm, right? I'm, oh, I don't even want to tell you what's happening when I'm saying that car. <laughs> <laughs> I had an orange Aston Martin. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a speedster. That, that shit is a beast. Wow. Two million bucks. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're not playing. Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to let them too. 
Oh. Uh, you gotta see what side. I got outside for you, Mike. Oh no! The moment is the moment of truth. It's, it's a, it's, it's, Don't it's, hurt it's, nobody. It's, it's a, it, <laughs> I'm gonna just say I pulled up in the Cullinan. Oh wow! And it's shitting on the Cullinan. Oh man! Oh. I pulled up in my 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 German custom Cullinan Rolls Royce. <laughs> But what I got for Mike is different outside. You know, Wiz Khalifa must go at it with the coloring and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got one. I got the coldest coloring out here. <laughs> I do. I was, oh, I was, shit. I was the first to have it, and then when I had to get another one, oh, just, just to like, throw it yeah, out. Just to throw it yeah. out there. Right? I'm a car guy. That's yeah. right. Kevin Hart, he tries to battle me, but he don't. Right, thanks for another great episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. Ooh, kid. And thank you very much, Nick Cannon. Cannon. We, we in here. Oh, I love you, my brother. Wallet out. Thank you. The wallet out interview. Yeah. <laughs>